You're live. Okay. So good morning and welcome to the to the Department of Political Science Information Session for the Master of Arts in Political Science or MAPS. So I am Teitana, Associate Professor and Graduate Program Coordinator of the Department. And with me are Professor Ari Sarugai, our Department Chair, Professor Ruth Losterio Rico, members of the Department's Graduate Faculty, and Ms. Donna Beltomandao, who is a current student and recipient of the Loretta Mokashar um, SIGAT grant. So thank you everyone for being here today and to our guests for your interests in our MA program. So before we begin, may I invite Professor Tadugay to give his welcome remarks. Thank you, uh, Associate Professor uh, Tay Martana. Good morning. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. On behalf of the Department of Political Science, I would like to thank everyone for uh, attending uh, this information session about the Master of Arts in Political Science program offered by our department. I think this might be our the first of its kind of these info sessions, but this will definitely not be the last. Uh, we hope that uh, through this information sessions, we can uh, effectively as well as uh, uh, truthfully promote our graduate programs and invite uh, our current students, students from other universities, as well as other interested uh, Filipinos and even uh, non-Filipinos to be able to uh, apply as well as uh, undertake the MA in Political Science program. So just a brief background, uh, the MA in Political Science program was offered as early as 1935 by the University of the Philippines under its graduate school. In fact, by next, by, by in a couple of years, this means that the MA in political science program will be 90 years old, older than any of us in this current virtual uh, Zoom meeting. The MA in political science program was in fact offered way before the BA in political science program. So let me just say that uh, uh, one of our graduate programs is also one of the first graduate programs of the University of the Philippines. Uh, this MA in Political Science program is currently being offered by the department, a department that has the biggest number of faculty members and therefore the biggest political science department in the country. Just to give you the exact numbers, uh, there are currently 18 members of the graduate faculty who teaches under the MA in Political Science program, 16 of which are regular faculty and, and two are what we call professorial lecturers. Uh, of all of these faculty, almost 95% have PhD degrees in political science and related fields. So therefore, uh, those of you who are interested to take our MA in Political Science program, Rest assured that you will be trained and taught by not only specialists, but those that have the necessary qualifications uh, to be able to uh, offer graduate courses, thesis advising, and other forms of mentoring in the discipline of political science. I would also like to say that the MA in political science is quite different, perhaps, from other grad MA political science programs offered in the uh, country so far because uh, it is skills oriented uh, and intense in research and technical training. We want our graduates of the MA in political science program uh, to be exposed and to for them to learn the different analytical techniques and methodologies in political science. A lot of our graduates become higher education institution teachers academics, as well as researchers, which I think is quite uh, uh, a well sought after career right now, given the importance being placed on research. Uh, so therefore, 
Uh, one uh, misimpression that I want to, to say so far is that it doesn't mean that you are pursuing an MA in political science that you will teach, just teach, right? So there is uh, a, a serious uh, focus on research as well as in methodological training. The MA in political science program in, U in the University of the Philippines is also a prestigious program in the sense that we have had um, many alumni, both Filipinos and foreigners who have uh, taken this degree and who have um, proudly uh, declared themselves as products of this program. Uh, I can distinctly remember when I was taking my, my doctoral degree in the United States, uh, my professor in one of my graduate courses asked everyone, it was a class of uh, PhD students from all over the world, and he simply asked, who among you has read Thomas Hobbes' Leviathan? And of all the 15 students, only one student raised his hand, and that is myself. So uh, my IR professor even said that it's really telling that it is the scholar from, the, from, from a global South country that knows the classics more than students from the United States and Europe. What I want to say is that uh, the MA in political science program is a serious graduate program, serious in the training of political science in all of its subfields, Philippine politics, political theory, comparative politics, international relations, and political methodology. So I do hope that this info session will be highly valuable to those who are attending today please feel free to ask questions. Uh, the members of the graduate faculty here are, uh, are spending their weekend, their Saturday morning to, to spend time with you and to orient you with the program because uh, if we admit you in the program, rest assured that we want you to be successful and we want you to complete the degree. Yun lamang po, magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Aluday. Okay, so now we go to the introduction of the program. Okay, so next please. There. So our Master of Arts or MA in Political Science program is aimed at individuals who wish to embark on advanced studies and are thinking of establishing a career in the field of academic research and politics. So it is designed for students who already have a basic understanding and or appreciation for teaching and research in the social sciences. So we introduce students to the different analytical techniques and methodologies in political science. They also have the opportunity to engage both faculty and their faculty fellow students in understanding, as well as solving key research problems and issues. Our graduates, as mentioned by Professor Alugay, usually pursue teaching and research careers in universities and other centers of higher education, but not a few become professional practitioners and managers in different political institutions and public agencies, as well as the private sector. So here are the program outcomes. We aim to produce graduates who are able to demonstrate advanced knowledge of various theoretical approaches in at least two areas of political science, construct and implement theoretically grounded and practically relevant research using advanced analytical methods and contributes to existing knowledge, communicate specialized knowledge about political phenomena across different publics and audiences, and lastly, to commit to professional excellence and ethical conduct in teaching research and public service in political science. Okay, so these are the program requirements. Um, so students have to complete 24 units of coursework, nine units of which will be from the student's area of specialization that I will discuss later, nine units of political methodology or area five, and six units of cognate courses. So what are cognates? Cognates are courses related to a root discipline. So possible cognates include international relations or IR courses, Asian studies, Philippine studies, Islamic studies, or any MA level course from any department within the College of Social Science and Philosophy. Um, the students will also have to write a master's thesis and also have to pass the comprehensive examinations. 
And regarding residence, uh, maps or MA in political science student is given five years to complete the program requirements, including the master's thesis. Residence may be extended every year for up to another five years. And please note that if you are a full-time student, or that is if you take 12 units every semester, you could finish the program in three to three and a half years. So now let me introduce the members of the graduate faculty of the Department of Political Science by alphabetical order. So Professor Aris Algugay, who is also the current head of the department, Professor Maria Ella Tienza, Associate Professor Dennis Blanco, Professor Teresa Encarnacion Tadem, who is also the current director of the UP Center for Integrative and Developmental Studies, or UPCIDS. Professor Jean Encinas Franco is also the department assistant chair. Assistant mm -hmm. Professor Perlit, yeah, hi ma'am. Associate Professor Perlita Frago Malasigan. Um, assistant Professor, yeah, John Robert Go is also the associate dean for um, research extension and publications. Um, assistant. Professor Sol Dorotea Iglesias, Professor Herman Joseph Kraft, Professor Ruth Losterio Rico, our College Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, Assistant Professor Tean Robles, me, and next, Associate Professor Rogelio Alicor Panao, Associate Professor Jalton Tagibao. Associate prof uh, Professor Paul Hetigno and Associate Professor John Paul Shalsita. And we also have the following professors emeriti Professor Carolina G. Hernandez, Professor Francisco Nemenso, Professor Felipe Miranda, and Professor Lecturer Dr. Uh, Maria Lourdes Pebolita. Okay, so now let's now look at the Paul Psych courses. So we have five areas of specialization. Previous slide, please, Monamaki. Thank you. Okay, so area one, Philippine politics. Area two, political theory. Area three is comparative politics. Area four is international relations. Area five is political methodology, which students are required to take. Okay, next. Okay, so... Uh, for area one, Philippine politics, so the, the core course is Paul Tsai 201, um, analysis of Philippine politics. And these are, uh, here are some sample electives. Um, so you could take also contemporary Philippine legislation, Paul Tsai 252, and Philippine local politics, uh, Paul Tsai 254. For area two, political theory, okay, core course, is Paul Sai 220, Issues in Political Theory. Okay, so sample electives, Paul Sai 221, Plato and Aristotle, um, Paul Sai 222, Medieval Political Thought. Okay, Comparative Politics is Area 3. So the core course is Paul Sai 270, or Theories of Comparative Politics. Okay, so again, sample electives, the Elite in Politics, Latin American Politics, Issues in Comparative Politics. Area four, international relations. Core course is international studies um, 290. Theories of international relations, sample electives. Um, we have a lot, but these are just examples. Paul Tsai 283, international political economy. Paul Tsai 285, issues inter in international law. And lastly, uh, political methodology. This is a required area. So you have to take Paul Tsai 210, Advanced Political Analysis. Another required course is um, Paul Tsai 211, Advanced Qualitative Methods in Political Science or um, Social Science 203, Sox 203, Advanced Quantitative Methods, Paul Tsai 299, Research in Political Science. Paul Tsai 300 is the master's thesis. So you can um, take this, you can enlist this after you pass the comprehensive exams. 
Okay, so here are some um, examples of um, topics st studied and thesis completed by our graduates. So, yeah, so food security, centralization, uh, municipal health decision making, and uh, the politics of societal accountability by Professor Arugay. Okay. Yeah. So now we go to the admission process. So these are the things that you need to know and do if you're interested in applying to our MA program. So the regular application period is usually from April 1 to 15 for the first semester and October 1 to 15 for the second semester. This time though, the application period is extended until May 31, 2023 for the first semester academic year 20, 2023 to 2024. And you will need to prepare the following. So an application form, um, you can access this, um, it's a Google form. Original and complete transcript of records, certificate of um, GWAR general weighted average, original PSA certified birth certificate for Filipino citizens, three recommendation letters from former professors and or employers, a letter of application addressed to the department chair, Prof Professor Alice A. Agugay, uh, we are also requiring applicants to submit a short research proposal or a concept note on a research topic or a research problem around 1,000 to 1,500 words. Yeah. And then uh, after submitting these documents, they will be evaluated and qualified applicants will be invited to a panel interview. Successful applicants will then be offered admission and admission will commence with the applicant submission of relevant forms to the College Office of the Graduate Program, the OGP. Okay, the OGP gives applicants instructions and um, how to proceed with their admission. And at the end of the process, the student receives an admission slip and temporary uh, CRS credentials. Uh, and then the last step, the new MAP student may now enroll. Okay, so these are the frequently asked questions like how much is the tuition fee? What are the class schedules? Do we have funding opportunities? Okay, so tuition is at 500 pesos per unit. Miscellaneous fees at 1,500. So this includes library fees, student fees, etc. cetera. Um, the usual assessment of students with um, a course load of six units is 4,500 pesos per semester. Okay, um, classes are usually on weekends from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. or Saturdays, but this depends on the instructor, the professor. So the following also are the types of opportunities that you can avail and the support that the department extends to the graduate students. So there are teaching assistantships, Scholarships are also available. So you can check the Office of um, Scholarships and Grants or OSG. But there are also um, CHED scholarships available. Um, grants like the Loretta Makashar Sika Thesis Grant. There are also awards like the Loretta Makashar Sika Prize for Social Sciences. We also encourage our graduate students to attend local inter and international conferences and colloquiums, as well as to publish. So you can also apply for an international publication award. And then finally, graduation. So a MAP student should apply for graduation when he or she is about to defend his or her master's thesis. Okay, so that's it. So thank you. Um, if you have questions, you may write them in the chat box and I will read them for you. Or you can save them for a while and ask them personally later. Because uh, at this point, I would now like to invite Professor Ruth Lusterio Rico to share her insights and advice. So good morning, Ma'am Ruth. Good morning, Tay and everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, hello to my former students. <laughs> oh, <you're> there. <laughs> 
Okay. So, sige mga first question. No? So, what are the goals of the MA in Political Science Program? I'm sure some of our audience are wondering about this too. Okay. So, we, we distinguish, of course, uh, between our goals, our goals as a department and our intention for you, the program outcomes. No, So, the program outcomes have already been... Um, uh, enumerated, uh, identified for you earlier. And if you'd like to revisit what they are, once again, I invite you to visit the department uh, website. But uh, our program goals, so it's, again, as I said, it's distinct no, from the program outcomes. Our goal really is to help our students in their professional uh, path, no, whatever, uh, to grow professionally so that they can advance in their career, so whatever it may be. But uh, uh, mostly, uh, based on experience, you know, I was uh, also graduate program coordinator for four and a half years, serving uh, two uh, department chairs, under two department chairs in 2006 to 2010. To November uh, to October 2010, just before I started my term as chair of the department. So I knew a lot of graduate students, therefore. That's the reason why I said that. <laughs> and uh, during that time, I could still manage to advise everybody. No? So not that I was a superwoman <laughs> then, but uh, that was the kind of practice that I inherited from previous uh, coordinators of the graduate program. So that meant that everyone went to me for advising during the registration period and for other things, no? so for their progress as uh, MA students. So actually, right now, we are still doing that, but our GPC, our graduate program coordinator, Dr. Tay Tana, ad, uh, assigned us advices. So if you will be, for example, if you will be assigned to me, you can write me anytime or even visit me in the office for advice regarding not only courses to take, no, but also uh, other things that are related to your um, studies as an MA policy student. Because our, our uh, goal really is to help our students as uh, our chair, Professor Aruga mentioned earlier, once you enter the program, we are committed to help you succeed in finishing the program. So um, maybe later on we can elaborate what other things we what are the other things we do to help our students succeed. But by saying this, I don't mean to say that we will do things for you <laughs> because you are already graduates. If you uh, apply for the program and you become graduate students, you are already considered as mature students. But that only means to say that we are very open to, uh, to your questions and any inquiry that you'd like because uh, as they say, we are not going to hold your hand. Na parang batang maliliit, ano? Not like that, but we are going to also still mentor you. That is the word to mentor our students. And that is our goal. So in mentoring, it does not only mean thesis advising. It does not only refer to thesis advising, but also mentoring you in terms of the development of your uh, profession, your development in your chosen career. Finally, because the department is a center of excellence in political science, and we are the only one in the country. Um, the only center of excellence in political science. It is also a commitment, therefore, of the department to help those who are teaching in the higher education institutions, particularly now, because it was mentioned that I'm also currently serving in the College of Social Sciences and Philosophy as one of three associate deans. So my area is academic affairs. But the thrust of CSSP right now is to reach out to the different um, state universities and colleges. Actually, just last, was it last Monday only, no? When we had our visitors from the Isabella State University 
and we had our benchmarking activity with them. So the whole morning of Monday. Uh, and that's that's just the one exclusively for political science. I think last semester there was also another university. So in other words, in short, no, that is the commitment of our department in institutionally, we are here to, to help those who would like to um, prosper, to develop further in their chosen careers. Thank you very much, ma'am. Arn, the next question is, um, what are our alums doing after graduation? So where are they now? Where are they working? Okay. So, uh, well, I was thinking about this uh, uh, for a few days now. No? Where are our alumni? Because uh, truthfully, we don't really track where they are. No? Uh, but the recent graduates are actually teaching. Many of them, a, a big majority, no, are are teaching. Well, you know, some uh, some students they didn't finish MA Paul uh, for one reason or another. It's not because they couldn't pass, or it's just a personal choice. Because um, uh, one of the things I I think that should also be noted uh, today is that a big majority of our students are working students. So sometimes there are career opportunities abroad. And they and they uh, transfer, you know, they they uh, uh, go to another country and then they continue their studies there. Okay. Having said that, uh, many of our students have uh, pursued their uh, studies abroad and they finish. So, isang anecdote lang, no? Kasi ito kinuwento sa akin ng mahigit naman sa isang estudiante, no? So, my uh, my previous student said, no, na uh, advantage yung MA Polsai when they transferred to another program abroad. Of course, I don't want that. No, Sana matapos naman ng, ng lahat ng mga nag-e-enroll sa MA Polsai yung, yung program sa atin. Pero sabi nila, in their, in their classes, in their universities, um, it, was, uh, it was very easy. <laughs> for them already to complete their their uh, courses especially the political the political research courses the, so therefore our area 5 anyway just to give you an idea no many are in as i said many are teaching the uh, per, uh recent graduates there are also those in international agencies and in ngos no? so um, I'd like to me just mention uh, uh, one of my thesis advices works for the United Nations Development Program, and he was actually invited to join us, but he's in another country, and I think there's difficulty in the uh, time zone no? in, uh, in joining us, but uh, he told me that he would uh, be uh, uh, very much willing to do it when... Uh, when the schedule his schedule allows and with the time zones uh, permit no so uh, so that no the the uh, the idea many pursue phd's abroad okay many of our graduates pursue their phd's abroad kasi nga academics no sa mm -hmm. ano um a big siguro if i will estimate ano mga 75% no are are teaching and uh, uh, as I said, I don't really have the the statistics on this, but I'm I'm just guessing based on my recollection of uh, the graduate the recent graduates no, that I know of. Well, one graduate is pursuing uh, further studies in Italy, so she also used to be a teaching associate of the department. So this is Celine Socrates. So, so I, I listed down no, the the last five, I guess, who uh, graduate uh, who were recent graduates of the program. So, Mr. Nathaniel Candelaria is a new faculty member of the department, uh, assistant professor. Of course, uh, Mr. Jonathan Hodder is the one working uh, with the United Nations Development uh, Program, um, and then uh, Miss Celine Socrates is. Uh, graduate student at uh, in Rome. I forget the name of the university, I'm sorry. 
and uh, of course uh, uh, Dr. John Robert Go uh, is a graduate of our department from UP Manila. He applied as a, uh, an MA policy student back then and uh, served as graduate assistant and then became a teaching associate and then uh, after graduation applied for uh, a position in the department. The rest is history. Now he's part of the graduate faculty. No? And uh, another one who's part of the faculty is uh, uh, Mr. Nelson Kainghog, assistant professor of the department. Now, uh, well, sorry, uh, Nelson graduated from the BAMA, BAMA Honors Program. Assistant Professor Kainghog uh, graduated from the uh, uh, BAMA Honors Program. Anyway, uh, with the names that I mentioned, uh, maybe you're thinking, oh, puro mga taga-department lang. Uh, actually, no. Because there are also among our recent graduates who, uh, like Mr. Alan Mendoza, I understand he's working for a government agency, and uh, some other graduates no, who uh, have, um, uh, who are not uh, faculty members of the department but are faculty members of other uh, higher education institutions. So we have a lot of them. So puro teaching uh, ang uh, focus ng mga nasa MA policy. We have another, of course, as you know, as you might know, we have another graduate program, the Master in International Affairs. Um, and that's the more popular program, I guess. Yung MA Polsay, talagang maliit na programa siya. Talagang kokonte historically, kahit nung panahon ko pa. Oh, speaking of my panahon, okay, I will also mention the, the names of those I recall who uh, graduated from uh, the MA Polsay program. Hindi ko naman sila naging classmates kasi mas matandang konti sa akin. <laughs> Uh, if you know the president of Pulse Asia, uh, Professor Ronald Holmes of De La Salle University is also an alumnus. Uh, and um, uh, Professor uh, Julio Tihanki of uh, De La Salle University. So just examples of the people who are of my panahon. <laughs> Okay, so thank you, ma'am. So, yun, no? So, most of our graduates usually end up in the academia, they pursue their PhDs. Pero, it doesn't mean naman na yun na lang talaga yung choice. Yun, no? So, you could also, you know, go to NGOs, as ma'am mentioned, and even to the private sector. Okay, so thanks, ma'am. So, next um question. Uh, so, siguro, curious din sila. How long does it usually take for students to graduate? Kasi we mentioned three to three and a half years. So, yun ba talaga po yung usual duration ng program? Well, actually, depende sa estudyante. It really mm. depends on the pace of uh, the student. Because, as I mentioned earlier, many of the students, a big majority, are uh, working full-time. Especially those who are working in other uh, universities. Their teaching load is really too, too heavy. No, that's why it takes um many it takes a long time for them to finish some of course do it uh faster than others no if they're full time students but related to this is uh if your concern is to be able to graduate right away no so that you can finish back at 3 to 3 and a half years kasi po may comprehensive exams at my uh, thesis, thesis. No? Uh, and uh, we cannot offer an MA program without one or the other. No? And MA policy has to have both because it is a degree program for somebody who would like to do a PhD. In, in other words, uh, some people call it a research program. So mapapansin ninyo in the curriculum that was discussed earlier, uh, the the program is heavy on the research courses, the required area, which is uh, political methodology. And in, in, in the revised uh, MA political science program, no? so the, the one that we are currently implementing, it was revised in 2016 in the revised program. Um, 
what we did was to strengthen the area of specialization and the skills in doing the analytical skills as well as the practical skills in doing research. That's why we have to have both comprehensive exams and thesis. So for those who are serious about finishing the course um, in, in the targeted time, let's say three years, uh, as mentioned earlier, there are many opportunities available within the university. And, and uh, we would like as much as possible also to take advantage of the teaching assistantship program of the university. So if you are uh, uh, interested, so I mentioned some people who went through the, uh, the, uh, that path no? uh, of being a TA before graduating while being a student, then uh, perhaps uh, we can arrange for them to also have a session <laughs> about the TA ship. Now it's briefly, it's something that the department applies for, but, but we have to have students who are interested in it. So for example, if one of you would like to become a, a teaching associate, uh, our, our department also have, uh, has its own uh, guidelines for students who'd like to apply. And then we apply to the Office of the Vice President for Academic Affairs. And that is approved by the university system for us to have our teaching associates. No? I think right now, um, we only have one. We can have more because, uh, yeah, uh, we can uh, maximize uh, this uh, opportunity. No? So in terms of graduation, it's really the employment that is um, the obstacle <laughs> no? in uh, finishing the the course in time before the MRR ends. No? So given that, having said that, no, many are employed and so on, um, the normal, therefore, is five years for a part-time, for a part-time uh, student. Halimbawa, no, if you take on a job and you take the classes, no, what is what's uh, what really takes a lot of time is the thesis, the completion of the thesis. Yeah, so dun minsan talaga tumatagal eh, no? And um, it's good that ma mentioned yung um, TA ship kasi magandang opportunity din yun, especially for grad students na ang goal niya is to become academics kasi teaching experience siya. So maganda yung um, when you start applying for yung full-time teaching jobs na. Okay, so thanks again, ma'am. So ito yung next question. So dalawa na lang, patsabayin na natin. So what are the few things, what are the few things that surprise new students about this program? And what type of person is most successful in this program? Okay. So maybe the other faculty members can also oh, contribute, no? But... Yeah, but in my in my view, I'll I'll deal with the second question. No? The exactly. one who is like more more likely to succeed, I think, is one who's serious and motivated. No, one who will plan out. Uh, ito yung gagawin ko para makuha ko yung degree. No, so balikan ko lang saglit yung TA ship. No, uh, it might create an impression that everyone who be, who applies to become a TA and becomes a TA will become a faculty member of the department hindi okay. naman okay our goal is also to give you to the other <laughs> institutions no you can just uh, be a ta while you are uh, an ma uh, uh, student uh, well yeah so so that's my answer for the first uh, for the second question um who is most likely to be successful no? so one who serious and motivated about earning the degree. It really depends on the on the student. No? Um, and then, because on the part of the department, uh, again, as I mentioned, I believe we are committed no, to, to, help, to help you succeed. Uh, what surprised you students about this program? I don't really know, but maybe it's the, you know, the methods courses are quite shocking. <laughs> <laughs> for some, no? so when they start doing 210, because uh, uh, 
uh, I don't know, maybe in the undergrad, they have not really been exposed to such kind of uh, course or it's, uh, yeah, or the expectation of the faculty members. No? Uh, but, um, yeah, I think, uh, uh, nasa-shock lang naman. Eh? Eventually, they get the hang of it. So, maybe let's invite the others to also jump in and share their thoughts. So, Professors Arugay, C.S. Franco, and Iglesias, and Blanco are here. So, any tips for our prospective students? Ayas, Ma'am Jean. Uh, hi, Tay. Hi, everyone. Oh, um, I think the best way to sort of survive and also finish the course is to, yeah, like what um, Dr. Lusterio Rico mentioned a while ago, uh, you need to be able to be strategic. Um, one um, way to do that is to already plan out the papers that you will do in each of the courses so that each paper will already contribute to um, your review of literature for your thesis. Meaning to say, once you reach your the thesis stage, you're already quite an expert on the topic that you wish to embark on. Um, then it makes it very easy for you to uh, journey throughout the um, uh, thesis phase of your graduate uh, program. Uh, because um, in my reckoning, um, Kaya nagtatagal yung iba because they keep either they keep on changing uh, topics or mm -hmm. they keep on changing advisors. Kasi syempre, pag iba na yung topic mo, um, hindi naman pwedeng yun pa rin ang advisor mo kung hindi naman niya specialization yun. So, um, and, you know, um, may, may bureaucracy din eh. You have to file papers. You have to fill out documents. So, and uh, once again, um, merong tinatawag na maximum residency requirement. So, ma madaming um, requisites uh, that you have to go through if uh, you keep on changing topics. So, uh, I know it's not um, easy as it sounds, but then you just have to be more reflexive of your interest um, so that you're willing to really, you know, um hold on to to your topic and even if you um change um somehow it's not really a, an overhaul kumbaga andun pa rin yung 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 uh, kabuuan ng topic but then meron lang a certain tweaking thank you okay so thank you ma'am so this is also why we ask you to submit um your research proposals along with your application documents para that early pa lang to more or less know what research topics you would like to work on, who could be your um, supervisor, no? So you could just parang, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. So sabi nga ni Ma'am Jane, you could still revise. Pero at least you, ha you have an idea, no? Yung research topic or the field, the, the area, the issue that you would like to, to work on. Okay, so uh, yes, Prof. Prof. Iglesias. Thank you, Dr. So, Tana. Hi, hi, Tay. And uh, good morning, everyone. I guess uh, because uh, we've gone to, I mean, just to respond to what Dr. Tana was asking um, in terms of tips, you know, I think one thing that really distinguishes graduate school um, from being an undergrad is the amount of reading you have to do, okay? Uh, and this is also what distinguishes a good graduate student from a not very, uh, or um, how should I put it, a more successful graduate student from uh, ones that might not be as successful. The ability to go through all that material, understand it, and later on engage with it, you know, in the comprehensive exams, for example, and, and so on. So in terms of tips, um, I think that when you're a grad student uh, doing your, your maps, let's say, um, group work is actually more like group, group work and being able to rely on your classmates. It's, it's a bit better <laughs> compared to when you're an undergrad, uh, maybe because at this stage, you know, people are more mature, uh, people are more focused and um, more determined. So um, just as a tip, um, when it comes to getting through 
like all the material you have to get through uh, in a graduate program like this one, form study groups, either small groups among your class, or if it's a very small class, help each other out, especially if there's an exam at the end of the semester. And this is something that will help you even for the comps. Uh, what can a study group do? You can divide the readings among yourselves so that, and, and then each of you, may toka toka kayo, no? So each of you has at least one reading na ikayo talaga ang magsa-summarize for the rest. Like a one-page summary focusing focusing on the central argument and and the and the supporting evidence. And then you can just sort of skim through the others or refer to the the summary when you're you're sort of like lightly reading the rest of it. But it gives you um, you know, a sense, a, an easier sense of what the material is. And it becomes an exam reviewer at the end of the semester, at the end of the three years, and so on. So yeah, like survival tips for grad school. Okay, thank you, um, Dr. Iglesia. So yun din, no? Um, so I recently talked to one of our graduates. Sabi niya, ma'am, talaga na siya ako sa number of readings uh, sa grad school. But you know, that's grad school. Okay, and you also have to learn the art of note taking, as um, Dr. Iglesia said. No, uh, yes, um, Dr. Blanc, Sir Dennis. Hi, thank you, Mante. Well, I think uh, if I have to anchor the the responses to that question on how to survive in the grad school in the MA Political Science program of UP, I, I have to utilize no yung program outcomes ng department ng, about MA. One is that. You really have to be flexible, you have to be adaptive, and you have to cope up with the theoretical uh, perspectives and approaches that the program is uh, insisting on. Because coming from, uh, uh, I didn't come from UP, but of course, when you're going to take MA in UP, you have to be exposed and immersed with different theoretical approaches and paradigms that are diff that you never uh, probably uh, accustom or encounter in other institutions. For example, when you talk about patron-client framework or, or state uh, society relations or other reinventing the government, these are paradigms that you don't didn't knew before. No? And once you are thrusted into the program, uh, you have to love it. You have to, you have to embrace it. No? Because uh, that will be the starting point of your theoretical uh, research. No? But once you familiarize yourselves with the theoretical uh, imperatives of the program. But another challenge is how we're going to situate it in the research, in the research endeavor. No? The, even the method, methodological and epistemological tool is very challenging no, in, in the department. And of course, uh, what surprises, what courses or subjects that surprises graduate students more is of course, is the interdisciplinarity is a, versatility of the of the curriculum no because in, you have five areas that you have to contend and that you have to work on unlike the, unlike in other department uh, institutions probably uh, the clustering of courses is not very clarified no and uh, in which you see that that five areas broken down to several clustering of courses so if you are coming from a different institution and you're going to enroll in MA program in UP I think it is imperative it is a must that you have to embrace the theoretical approaches and be able to convert and transform that into a research intensive or uh, research driven uh, practices. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, sir. Yeah, so theories are important, um, but don't worry, it's something that you're going to learn in class. Uh, I think just to follow up to what um, Sir Denny said, I think what's more important is how you apply the series to real world problems. So one tip from a student from a, a recent graduate is that he always keep up to date with current events you know, and try to apply what he learned in class to, to this uh, real world issues like what's happening in the South China Sea and Ukraine, all that. Okay, So it's also something that's going to be very useful when you, you know, take your comps. So start practicing uh, this early. Apply what you learn in class to real world uh, situations or real world problems. Okay? So, yeah. so next question. So we mentioned the requirements kasi earlier diba, that you need to, to submit uh, a recommendation letter and also a sample writing. 
So I would like to ask our graduate faculty, Ma'am Ruth Muna, siguro din, uh, what makes a good recommendation letter and what makes a good writing sample or research proposal and the others could also contribute later. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, for the recommendation letter, um, as somebody who really knows you as a student to write that letter so that the letter will express um, the, the recommender can write there in that letter that you will most likely succeed no, in finishing the program because a recommenda recommendation letter is like um, an endorsement of you. No? <laughs> this student has been uh, uh, my student in the past, so on, and exhibited these qualities, blah, blah, blah. So that the graduate faculty uh, uh, of the department who will evaluate the, the records will, will see that there is indeed somebody who vouched for this student. No? Kasi it's really not just the grades. No? And uh, going back to that, I, to that shocking, what shocks <laughs> new students, no? I like that uh, Sol, uh, Dr. Iglesias uh, mentioned the amount of reading <laughs> that you'll uh, have to tackle in, in uh, grad school. And there is, of course, uh, there is a way of tackling it even if you're working. So that's a very good idea to, it's really a very good idea to have a group to have your batchmates, no? Uh, to be connected with them. Ngayon ang dalina because we have messenger, etc. No? So, uh, so yun, no? in the recommendation letter, I think uh, it should come from somebody who can really vouch for your abilities. And um, of course, we put their former professors or supervisors, job supervisors. But if your current job does that have anything to do with <laughs> uh, you being a, a political science student, uh, um, I, I think the recommendation will not really count. Uh, uh, the weight no, will not really be much. Now, um, uh, the other question is about... Uh, the research proposal. Ah, the research proposal. Okay. It would be best if you come back to your, um, if you review what you've done in your undergrad. So may I ask a little bit of participation and also for us to know if you're really there. <laughs> can, you, can you put a thumbs up if you have an undergraduate degree or will have an undergraduate degree in political science? A BA or an AB? Okay, thumbs up. Okay. Oh, and, uh, me. oh most of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So thank you. So we know that uh, you're there. <laughs> uh, sige. As I was saying, review what you've done in your undergrad. Some uh, programs in other universities require a thesis in their undergrad, isn't it? In their undergrad program. So reviewing nyo na. Kasi minsan din, the panel will ask, the, the ones who will interview for admission will ask, uh, what do you in intend to do for research? Pero if you have already a thesis, diba, that's sort of ready-made already. So review na yun na lang. Um, I, and I think uh, also if you review that, then you can come up with your 1,000 to 1,500 uh, page, uh, I mean uh, 1,000 to 100, 1,500 word essay on your proposed uh, research uh, problem or your mini research proposal uh, for uh, for admission. Um, titignan lang naman dyan kung polisay ba talaga yung topic na inaral mo. Eh. And don't worry, hindi naman kami mag-grade talaga dyan na, oh, eto, no? it's really as an assessment of what our students, uh, prospective students already know. And um, yeah, don't also feel insecure that uh, maybe, ay, hindi ako pwede dyan kasi wala ako dito, o ganyan. Uh, there are ways to catch up. No? So, ang tip ko naman dyan is that magbasa na kayo ng, or mag-review na kayo ng Andrew Haywood book. <laughs> Para ready na kayo na to, to take up, uh, read the portions that are 
relevant to the area that you're choosing as an area of specialization. Siguro yun naman ang mga tips ko for those who will apply. Yeah, thanks ma'am. So usually also to add, no, what we look for, um, so narrow ba is, in our, is the topic narrow enough? Diba? Pero not too narrow. Diba? Um, research question, sana. Kung if you're able to identify also an argument. Uh, dito rin siguro papasok yung sinabi ni Dr. Blanco kanina about theory. So kung meron na kayong a, bit, a little background about theory, then it's a, good na pa, it's a good way to show na, to demonstrate na ah, alam ko to and this is how you know, I can apply this uh, theory or this paradigm to this particular problem. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Pero makita lang namin yung potential nyo as graduate students in the essay. Uh, yes, Professor Alugay. Doon lang, <clears throat> lang sa recommendation letters, uh, you can, it might be in the website, but Maki, please confirm no that kasi you can, we can receive letters from your former professors, but there is also a form that they can fill up. Um, and this form is um, a college form of the Office of Graduate Program. So uh, Maki might uh, be able to send you the template and then normally it's filled up either uh, no, uh online hindi man hindi online siya kasi parang pdf lang yung document or uh, uh possible referees or possible recommenders for your application they can just fill up the form so both are acceptable uh but you can also send yung actual letter sa program of study we just uh kaming mga nasa admissions committee before we just want to have a sense of your research interest because remember that MAPS has a thesis and uh, <clears throat> part of our assessment is that we also want to be able to determine if we can really uh, train and mentor you kasi magkakaroon ng dapat overlap with your proposed program study and the specialization and uh, research interests of the faculty because we want you to be mentored, to be advised by who is the specialist, no? who has experience in the teaching and research of your chosen area or your chosen topic. So yung, yung, uh, uh, that's, that's a principle that our program pretty much uh, is respectful of. So therefore, we have we want to have a sense. Hindi naman ibig sabihin na yun na yun, no? pagdating nyo ng... Because coursework, pag, if you take courses, your, your research interest might change and there might be uh, new developments in politics that, you, that might sway you uh, to uh, do your topic. So for example, I wanted to study uh, sana the ombudsman no? in the beginning. But EDSA DOS happened in 2001. I was on the streets participating in the anti-Estrada protest. So that catalyzed my, my eventual thesis because of, of that singular event that has not only affected me personally. No? Uh, Ma'am Ruth, i ano na kita? Kasama ko si Ma'am Ruth no, no, sa EDSA. Uh, but it has also um, profoundly inspired me to, to study uh, civil society to study the role of the military in politics. So therefore, pwede pang magbago, no? depende sa mga courses na kukuhanin nyo at depende pa sa ano yung, what area of politics you are passionate about. Yeah, so thanks. Thanks, Prof. So we, it's good that you mentioned the area specialization because we also asked that during interviews. So, so what's, your, what's your area specialization? Who do you think could be your advisor in that? Pero as uh, Professor Eluge mentioned, it's not really set on stone. So you can change your mind. Yeah. 
Okay, so as long as you could finish on time. So yun naman, so you have to also bear that in mind. Okay, so yun lang yung questions ko for Ma'am Luth. But there is one question from our audience, from Paul, I believe. So he said, Hello, Paul. Would just like to ask whether there are opportunities to do exchange programs for one or more semesters, especially if there are no graduate courses offered in UP that are fully connected to our research plans and interests. May I answer that? Yeah, yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, being being the one who is most excited to participate in a program being offered by the Office of International Linkages mm -hmm. of the UP system because I've know I've had this information for a long time and have shared it with my students but so far no takers yet. So there is a I, I'll just mention one uh, particular program which is cooperate, no? So um, we have, hindi lang ako, pero the other faculty members also, uh, the other graduate faculty members ha have, uh, in fact, have uh, uh, perhaps more than me, are really uh, very well networked no? in universities where we have a memorandum of agreement. So the idea is for this, the program is called Cooperate. The idea is for the student to spend a semester in a university abroad and there will be a co-advisor. So this will happen when the student is already in the thesis stage to do the research. So the partner professor, so for example, lang po, myself, if I have uh, somebody in another university um, and I have an advisee, for example, then we can come up, we can apply for that program. So mm -hmm. just I don't want to take up too much of the time to explain it, but uh, the, the short answer to that question is yes, there are opportunities that are available. And what is needed is really just the cooperation <laughs> of the advisor. So uh, if a student is interested, so uh, nabanggit na kanina, no? uh, I think it's Professor Jean Franco who mentioned you strategize, be strategic no? In, about your plans. So kung meron kang ganyan plan, planuhin mo na ang buhay mo. <laughs> no? mm -hmm. If you have that target, uh, make that plan. Uh, I'm just telling you that there is one and I'm uh, very eager to have our department participate in it. Kahit hindi ako, kahit yung iba. Pero ako, I'm willing to be the like the uh, the one who will be the guinea pig. No? <laughs> um, kasi yung, the first one to do it, usually siya yung nakaka-experience ng mga, ano yung mga concerns. Diba? It's, Better if you're the second one kasi meron ng previous experience. Mm. Kung ano yung naging problema dun sa, dun sa una, eh, mare-resolve. No? Or, or at least ready ka na, na de, uh, to face that particular challenge. But I'm very willing to be the first one if ever there's somebody interested to do it. No? Having said that, finally, the other units are doing it. No? So kaya ako, ako lang, I'm excited to do it with with an MA poli sci student in the future, hopefully. Thank you. Hopefully, itong batch na to, no? <laughs> So, mag-apply. Si, sino yun? Si Paul? Si Paul. No. Okay. So, Paul, I don't know you yet, but that's the <laughs> answer to your question. So, thank you, Paul. Uh, hope that would motivate you to apply to the program. No? So, are there any more questions from our audience? You can just raise your hand and mute yourself and ask the questions directly. Going once, twice. Lana? Okay, if you have uh you na easy or na hiya kayo, no, so you can just you can just um email the department, so Miss Maki, and she will forward the questions to us. And sometimes she'll use us good since she's also very familiar with the policies of the department's graduate program. Okay, so thank you very much, Ma'am Ruth. Uh, um, Dr. Iglesias, Dr. Franco, Dr. Blanco, and Professor Edugay. So now may I call on Ms. Donna Beltomandao? Hi, Donna. Hello, uh, so as I've said, so Donna is um, a current student. She's writing her thesis and she's the recipient of the LMS thesis grant. Yeah, so could you please tell us a bit about yourself, Donna? Like, um, ano year ka na? Yeah, stage of your ano, candidacy? Yeah, um, I'm actually, yeah, as mentioned by uh, Dr. Teitana, I'm at the latter end of the program. I'm currently 
um, working on um, the completion of my thesis. I am really hoping that I'll be able to finish, I mean, defend my thesis in the second semester. Um, owing to some challenges arising from the uh, pandemic, it took me a long time to actually work on my thesis right. proposal as well as my thesis, but um, through the LMS thesis grant as well. Uh, I'm really happy that I'm almost I'm almost done. Hopefully, I'll be able to uh, finish it um, the second semester of the current mm -hmm. academic year. I entered in 2017, ma'am, so it's like my sixth year, I believe. Uh, nagtagal lang talaga ako because of, of the pandemic. The pandemic yeah, so it's yeah. really a big challenge for me. Uh, yes. Yeah, and you're in Tacloban now, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm, yeah. I'm currently based in Tacloban. Um, as mentioned earlier, I'm also, um, many of the students of the program uh, yeah, are teaching in higher teaching, education. Uh, yeah. I'm also uh, an instructor of political science here at UPV Tacloban College. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Again, salamat. So it's a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's okay, mom. I'm happy to do it as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So first question. Mm -hmm. Um, what is your grad school experience like? Or what do you oh. like more? And also, what do you like mm -hmm. about the program? <laughs> um, yeah, um, I think um I can describe it in two words. It's uh, been a very challenging experience, obviously. I mean, for I think a lot of uh, graduate students could attest to that. Any graduate um school experience would be very challenging but for me it's really a worthwhile experience especially as I mentioned I'm um, also an instructor of political science at my home in, in my home institution which is UPV Tacloban College and worthwhile for someone who's in the academe because at this point currently our uh, faculty resource is quite weak so if I'll be able to obtain a master's degree in political science especially from the Department of Political Science at UP Daliman, I'll be able to help strengthen our faculty resource. And mm -hmm. later, I think when I decide to pursue uh, higher studies, um, getting uh, obtaining a degree from the department would be a, uh, a big help for me. So um, um, I would like to, I'll, I'll explain later why I find it challenging, but I would like to highlight first, um, especially for the prospective students here, uh, what, why did I choose? to uh, apply for admission into the MA program of the department. It was already mentioned, I believe, by Mom Ruth earlier. Um, the Department of Political Science is the only uh, CHED Center of Excellence in Political Science in the country, and that's the main reason why I, I uh, chose to apply for admission into the MA program. As you have already heard, um, the faculty of our department are among the top and the best Polsai uh, scholars in the country. Uh, they are widely recognized uh, for their um, contributions to their respective areas of expertise as seen through their uh, various research projects, their publications, and even public service. You might have actually seen them getting interviewed <laughs> sometimes no, uh, by journalists. They're uh, called political analysts. So that's one of the reasons. And I think one thing that prospective students would like about the program is the tuition fee as presented earlier. Compared to other universities and colleges, the tuition fee um, is very affordable. So that's one consideration. And uh, personally, uh, when I started the program, what I like about it is that, as presented earlier by Mom Tay, it allows students to specialize in one area. And I appreciate as well that uh, the, area, the fifth area, which is political methodology, is a required area. So it I, I find it really useful when I started working on my thesis. By the way, my area of specialization is Area 1, which is uh, Philippine politics, and my thesis uh, mainly focuses on a dec the decline of a political dynasty. So that's my topic. Um, for the second part, why do I find it challenging? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think uh, I think it was already uh, these things were mentioned by our graduate faculty earlier. But um, I think even though I am a my undergraduate degree is BASS political science, actually, um, when I started the program, uh, it has made in the department uh, it has made me aware of the so many shortcomings and um, there were a lot of things as I, I think mentioned earlier by uh, Sir Dennis Blanco. Uh, there were a lot of things which I wish were introduced to us during our undergrad, but I only learned about them during when I started graduate school. But I think that's the point of being in grad school. Or we're supposed to learn. So that's one. Another challenging part is, um, as mentioned earlier, 
uh, in studying political science entails a lot of reading, a lot of writing, a lot of um, doing research. And in fact, in many of my classes, it uh, requires reporting in class as well. So it would really ask you to devote a lot of time and effort to work on your course requirements. But I believe overall, they these things do help students improve a lot of skills. So it's, it's, it's really helpful at the end of the day. Um, another challenging thing, at least in my case, ma'am, because um, I started working on my thesis proposal during the, uh, the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. So mm -hmm. it really... <laughs> It's really the, the highlight of my graduate school experience. I had to go back to my province. I'm from Leyte and I live in, in my, my hometown. Um, the biggest problem is internet connection. So I had right. difficulty mm -hmm. working, completing my thesis proposal because of uh, weak internet connection. And later, um, data collection, when I did my data analysis and even the thesis writing stage, I was already rendering service in my home institution. So I was, you know, juggling these tasks as a faculty, a part of the faculty and also working on my thesis. So uh, it was really challenging because I think other working students would also um, have the same challenge when they get to be admitted to the program. So, so far, yun naman, <laughs> challenges. Okay, thanks, Donna. Uh, I guess na answer mo na to inter uh, indirectly in some way, pero siguro just to stress, ano? so how yeah. is the program helping you with your current and future career plans? Oh, um, yeah. Um, currently, as I mentioned, because I'm also working in the academy. Now you're teaching, yeah. yeah yes, mm -hmm. mom. There were a lot of realizations that uh, I had, like, um, the reading materials, the important reading materials that I read in grad school, I actually introduced some of them um, to my, you know, how I am Your teaching my hands. Yeah, yes, ma'am. And I found it really useful. And um, um, for our department, um, I think if I get to complete um, the program, that would really help our department strengthen our faculty profile. So that's one. And I also intend to actually pursue higher studies after PhD. this. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Um, we're highly encouraged <laughs> as faculty. We're highly encouraged to do that. But I think yeah, getting a degree from the department uh, would really uh, help me um, boost my application. <laughs> okay. okay. So good luck with that PhD application so after thesis. No? Um, okay. So next question, how would you describe the learning environment in be like what kind of support are you receiving from the graduate faculty the department and even the university well um the learning environment the in the department and even in cssp the environment has been really conducive for learning um the uh, facilities that the, the department and the college in general have are quite nice um the non-teaching staff, both in the department and the OGP, are very kind. They're very accommodating. So, for example, see Ms. Mackey in the department. I've asked her a lot of times. I have a lot of concerns. They've She has been able to assist me. The graduate faculty of the department are also very approachable. Um, I have They have helped me in some of my requests in relation to my scholarship. I'm a CHED scholar. And I um, also some requests or requirements from work. So they have been able to help me. Um, talking about the opportunities and aid from the department or from the university, uh, we as students of the department, we sometimes receive, no, oftentimes we receive emails from the department and from the OGP, the Office of the Graduate Program, um, emails about opportunities where students could apply for financial aid, for um, yeah, financial aid, for support, where uh, in order for them to complete their uh, research or thesis, and in some, uh, there were some emails about uh, opportunities for students to present their papers in conferences. And uh, in my case, um, I was uh, encouraged by my thesis advisor, Dr. Maria L. Atienza, to uh, apply for the uh, Loretta Makasiar uh, TICAT thesis grant, which is, uh, I think it's a $3,000 uh, grant. I'm, I'm really grateful that I was selected as the recipient of the LMS grant. And as I mentioned, it really helped me um, uh, in dealing with some financial difficulties that I faced during um, my data collection, even during the thesis because financially, COVID-19 pandemic, it was truly difficult. So it really helped me in dealing with some financial difficulties. But aside from that, um, being the recipient of the LMS grant, 
it in a way it was a confidence booster for me to to finish and to complete my program i mean the the thesis and eventually complete the program i also believe it later it would help me when i apply for a phd i could uh, include it there as a recipient of the grant so i hope it could help me uh, yeah, strengthen my application when i decide later on to pursue um uh, a phd um later yeah, yes, so of course, it will help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so congratulations again for getting that grant. <laughs> okay, um, last, Guru, any advice for the prospective students, for applicants? Um, yeah, I uh, similar advice I think to what um, the other graduate the other graduate faculty mentioned. But the biggest lesson I learned, which I would like to share to our prospective students, this is really a big lesson for me. I, I think. Um, I wish I had uh, seriously considered this, that before you start, or if you're just about to start the program, you already have a research topic in mind and that you have uh, uh, at least uh, read enough literature about that topic. Along the way, as mentioned, I think earlier by Mom Jean, you could develop that at, as your thesis topic. And um, in that way, you could save a lot of time, actually, because you would have accomplished sufficient research work for that particular topic. So uh, it would be really helpful if you already have um, a research topic in mind. So, you know, um, you have... Uh, you are a master already of that particular topic, so you save a lot of time. Another um, uh, uh, advice or tip that I could give is, I think it was this was pointed out earlier by Dr. Iglesias, but um, one thing I noticed is that um, there are very few uh, students in the MA uh, and the PhD programs. So even during yung batch namin, in comparison to the MIS students, I think it's now called MIA, but yeah, before the, the MIS students, I noticed that there were many students in that program Medyo naingit ako nun ng konti. Because like, there were, I, I noticed how they were really close with each other. I heard that they sometimes review together for exams. They have like their own study groups. They discuss what they have learned from their class discussions. And that's in a graduate, in the life of a graduate student, it's important to have you know friends and be close with your classmates, constantly talk to them um, so that you won't feel alone. In the program, but in my in our case, kasi konti lang kami and several were actually working, so we rarely mm -hmm. talk outside our classes. So uh, that was one factor um, that actually um, kind of we felt alone. Example of doing and reviewing for exams or preparing for the comprehensive exam. But uh, I wish this batch, if you and if you decide or you get admitted to the program, you also um, take that into account. It's it it will be really helpful to uh, have study groups and uh, constantly talk to your classmates. Uh, another thing, which I think for, if there are students who just like me are coming from uh, provinces, so prospective students who are coming from provinces, so the, one of the challenges that I had to uh, deal with is um, some adjustment issues because I come from the province. So adjusting to the city life in Metro Manila and Quezon City was uh, quite uh, a challenge for me. So for those students, no, probably issues to main issues like transportation. Baka malate kayo sa klase nyo. And uh, cost of living are, uh, I think, uh, key factors that you need to take into account if you decide to move to Manila and uh, start the uh, MA Political Science Program. So uh, I think yun lang naman, I think the others, ma'am, have been already mentioned by the graduate faculty. Okay. So thank you very much, no, Donna, for sharing your experiences and tips. So again, good luck with your thesis. So we look forward to your defense soon, no? very soon. <laughs> thank okay. you, Paul. Thank you. So any questions or comments from our audience? We have questions. Don't be shy. We don't bite. <laughs> or we have sufficiently answered you know, your uh, any questions that you might have. Siguro. Any questions? So last chance to ask your questions directly to us. Okay, so if there's nothing else, then I would like to um thank uh ah, Maggie, yes, you're, you're raising your hand. Yes, hey. ma'am, there are questions regarding ah. procedures. Oh, um, okay. So perhaps yeah, you can just they, read them out. I know ma'am. Um they can just email me at <laughs> email us at callside.up. Ah. ah, okay. Ah, okay. So, so that, it's just a procedure of okay. applications. Okay. Hindi ko po masagot sa chat kasi I'm doing some techie duties. Ah, ah, okay. Sige. So, yung mga technical questions, no? So, pwede naman sagutin na ni Maki yan. Um, just 
send us an email so we will reply to them promptly okay so wala na wala na from our audience na gusto itanong okay sige so thank you again everyone for your attendance and interest and we hope to receive your application soon no? so i hope you found this info session helpful, fun, fun, fun now, and, in, and encouraged you not to apply to our MA program. So please remember that the deadline for applications is on May 31 this year. So yeah, next the, at the end of the month. Um, just in case now, yeah, no, you not successful your applications, you know, and you're able to be admitted to the program, don't give up. No, so may mga challenges like Donna said, pero the rewards are greater than than any of the um challenges. So don't give up. Be confident. Remember why you started. Okay? So, yun. So again, thank you. And okay. may meron pa? Ay, meron sorry. Pa? Oh, may pahabol po kasi baka gusto nilang ah, oh, sagot dito. Oo, oh, oh, sige. Um, mga, mga, basahin ko po. Good afternoon. The, the remarks of Prof. Aris earlier is very much encouraging for me as an average person, especially when it comes to assisting person. students mm -hmm. on how to go about their respective research work. Um, what will be your suggestions for those aspiring applicants who don't have grades in the under, ha, who don't have good oh. grades in the undergrad, but with good standing and years of experience in his or her profession related to the program? Okay. So you don't really have to be an exemplary student, no? Wala namang average student. Kailangan namin ay matyagang estudyante. Tama ba? Sige, uh, Prof. Alice. Your yeah, I mean, mm. you, you see in the application requirements that application to the graduate program oftentimes, uh, especially in UP, has a uh, required uh, grade point average or general weighted average. But... This is where I think, unlike other, uh, when I applied for my PhD, I was not interviewed. No, but the the interview is to somehow really have get a sense of the applicant that the paper documents might not necessarily reveal. So if if uh, you should not be discouraged just because you do not have an excellent or a, an outstanding undergraduate record because. There are other ways to, to measure your capacity to uh, undertake a graduate program. No? But uh, uh, it really depends. There was a time where in the department was very strict no? with the GWA and, and GPA. Uh, how, do I, how do I describe? Maybe because there were too many applicants and it was really just an easy way to, to do a first cut. But um, as I mentioned to you, uh, we, we really put also uh, some weight on professor, uh, professional experience, especially if it is in line with uh, the goals of the program. And if you have, uh, uh, you might not have a good undergraduate uh, record, but uh, uh, you commensurate naman yung, yung experience and it's highly relevant and aligned with the MA in political science program. But uh, siguro hindi nabanggit kanina, no? we, uh, at wag naman po sana matakot yung mga mag apply But we, 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 since we want you to succeed, uh, normally we all, we, we, when we admit you, we sometimes admit you on a probationary basis. Huh? And, and why do we do this? For uh, some of the factors are, one is that uh, uh, upon our assessment with the with your paperwork and with your with your with the interview, in our judgment, um, mas maganda na mas matutukan nyo yung first year of your graduate program. So the probationary status doesn't mean that uh, you are less of a student than others. It is really more that we want you to be able to adjust immediately and by doing so we pag probationary status ano ba ibig sabihin nun? uh that you should have grades no and completed uh your courses in your first year as a graduate student so no drop no incomplete uh because 
uh, this is a way for you to really focus and therefore to easily assimilate in, in the graduate program. And we normally uh, give this to, to, to students upon our assessment that uh, the student will need to focus and, and, and umaga, eh, tumutok no, dun sa graduate program. After a year, that status will be lifted. No? Kasi may nakikita kami yung students uh, promising and all. Pagdating ng first sem, magdadrop. Pagdating ng first sem, mag incomplete and, um, and we do want serious, as mentioned by Professor Ruth earlier, we want serious students. And uh, uh, hindi naman you have to prove yourself, but if you if you are diligent if you uh, are are focused on your studies the probationary status ni hindi mo yan mapapansin no? the, the, and and you will just realize that it's been lifted and uh and and your and and you can continue with your program so uh kumaga para lang the the status is really to help you succeed in in the program so uh please do not be uh, do, please do not prevent yourself from applying to the program basta nakita nyo yung GWA or kung sa tingin nyo mababa yung grades nyo but um, but please do bear in mind that uh, if you are already in the program that uh, your grades need to be two or better because if not uh, the department's policy is that they will not be credited now Pwede niyo mong sabihin na ang hirap naman dos or or higher dapat yung grade but uh if if you do the work and if you are attending classes if you are reading the readings if you are participating and turning in your outputs there is no reason for you not to get a grade of better even way better than 2 Okay so thank you very much uh, Prof. Aluga. it's very encouraging for our um potential applicants. Uh, I think we have another question from Paul. Paul, would you like to ask the question yourself? You can just unmute. No need to turn on your video if you don't want to. Uh, okay, so perhaps um, maybe the internet connection or transit. Oh, oh, okay, so, yeah. so Maki, you can just Paul. probably just read. Mm -mm. Uh, quick question daw po. Can you discuss briefly about any opportunities for interdisciplinary study within the MA Polsai program? Just curious lang po as someone who may be interested in political sociology. Yan po. Prof. Arugay, would you like to answer that question? Uh, we, we have cognate courses. no, And um, uh, the program allows you to take courses in related fields. So I suggest if you're interested in sociology, you, you can take uh, courses, yung cognate courses, uh, and, and therefore uh, you can bridge no, to, to another discipline. The other forms of interdisciplinarity that I'm thinking of is that when you, when you are at the thesis stage and uh, in with, of course, the advice of your thesis advisor, then you can also tap uh, one of uh, one of the professors in other fields to be part of your committee. And therefore, kasi yung, yung thesis committee naman, parang hindi lang yan yung taga, taga, taga evaluate ng thesis. These are also going to, some of them, particularly uh, the members, they're going to be your mentors as well. So while you are being mentored by the advisor, you can also get some form of um, mentoring. Pero siguro ang advice ko, no? especially dun sa mga uh, sa thesis stage, no? always trust and follow your advisor. Your advisor knows best. So uh, normally, nahihirapan yung student pag hindi niya sinusunod yung advisor. Pero trust me, no? you have your, there will be, come a time wherein you can do your independent research without an advisor. But in the meantime, if you are in an MA program, please follow and trust your advisor because they know best and they will help you finish the program. The more that you veer away from your advisor, ang nakikita namin, the more na <laughs> nagtatagal at nagiging hindi successful. 
So thank you, Aries. Thank you again, Paul, for the question. So do we have any more questions? Uh, ito, ah, meron nga. So sorry for asking this late technical question lang po. How flexible is the program for employed prospective students in peripheral regions like, for example, in Mindanao? Me answer that because uh, a few days ago, the university has released its academic policies for the incoming academic year. Uh, unfortunately, these academic policies are going to be issued every year. So hindi yan with finality. But I think I I I interpret the 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 news quite positively because it will still allow fully online classes for the incoming academic year. So uh yun nga yung naging naging issue no nung pandemic hindi issue yun but once the university uh, allowed uh face to face classes and activities nagkaroon ng ganun ano no so this is still something that the department needs to to talk about kasi naiisip namin um while fully online classes pwede pa rin sa grad level no sa undergrad kasi hindi pwede yung fully online no but sa grad level this means that we can still have uh professors offering fully online classes but we already have of course graduate classes right now in this semester being offered in a blended mode meaning combination ng ng synchronous and asynchronous activities uh as in any case the department is preparing for hybrid delivery of graduate courses meaning uh if kung may face to face activity pwedeng magjoin yung iba via zoom particularly yung dun sin sinasabi from the provinces and the regions but this is something that needs to be agreed upon by the department by the graduate faculty but what i can also say is that the graduate faculty has uh hindi lang started no but most of us is now appreciating the 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 utility of no distance and even blended uh delivery no not because uh ayaw namin mag face to face but we see that uh it could be both. No? Uh, a graduate program can both be delivered distance in 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 e mode, in e learning mode, as well as face to face. So, ang future mukha no ng graduate uh, program instruction is is this no, and it will be more flexible. Especially, ito yung naging challenge ng mga estudiante namin sa program from the other SUCs, from the other provinces, kasi. Uh, yan si Donna Bell. She needed to be on leave, no, from her university. But if there could be arrangements uh, that could be made that allows itong hybrid uh, that they could join and they can maybe come to campus once or twice a semester. Who knows? Uh, this is something that that the department can. It's very much open. So that's what I can say. It's very much open. So if I were you, if you are from the regions and you want to apply, just apply. And the department will will think of ways to uh, adjust and accommodate yung yung situation. If not, we will tell you, no. Uh, and um, because uh, this is something that needs to be decided by the government. Okay, so thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so please don't be discouraged not to apply, kahit na uh, malayo kayo. Okay. Um, any more questions? Maki, are there any more questions? Sa po po, the chat? Ah, pa. Sige. Sa chat. Okay, so please read it out. Uh, may I ask if the department accepts transferees and graduate courses? I, I defer to Ma'am Ruth on this kasi siya yung mas may experience. But uh, parang start from scratch ba, Ma'am Ruth? Or may pwede naman mag-crediting but I think do we do that in the graduate program? Uh, uh, ang difference, uh, ang difference between the undergrad and the graduate program is that very minimal yung inaallow for transfer of credits. Yeah. So lalo na kung galing sa ibang institution, kasi konti lang naman yung unit sa grad program. So yeah, correct. Uh, most likely, um, start from scratch. Right. Uh, Ang 
and and also to add what uh, uh, Mam Ruth said, siguro kung kung ako rin sa inyo, I would rather get the course in the University of the I, I I'm not saying na dahil mas magaling or or whatever no but all I'm saying is if you really want to succeed in the program the yung MA Polsai program kasi talagang pinag-aralan namin yan we revised it in 2015 tinignan namin yung sequencing what role each course required course will play each core course will play cognates so lahat ng yon no so if you will not get the full experience of the graduate program uh baka hindi ma-realize yung goals or yung program outcome so i suggest that uh yung transfer of credits just just think about all the courses that you've taken as you know still going to help no mm-hmm. because they are kumaga it of all, tinignan ko yung mga MA programs no in political science in the entire country we have the least number of credit units no? 30 no? others are 42 36 and uh Uh, and we will not, and and UP as you know will not charge you uh an arm and a leg uh for per unit of that 30 unit so uh, kumbaga eh yung value for money po eh nandoon no? sorry ah parang hard sell ko na yung graduate <laughs> but uh uh kumbaga eh sangka pa nandito na yung mga specialist tapos may value for money pa uh nag-adjust pa according to to context. So, um all we're saying is that this is a mandate given to us as self-imposed mandate but also our mandate as a center for excellence that we continue to train the next generation of political scientists in the country. So, we're just living up to that commitment. Yes, okay. Thank you. Medo pa, Mahi? Po, okay, sige. Um, pero yun nga, if you have more questions, so feel free to email us at, us at polsai.upd at up.edu.ph. Okay? Uh, it's in our website. Naman. Okay. Sige, so wala na din. Maraming salamat ulit sa lahat ng nakadalo. Um... So please remember that the deadline is on May 31. So I look forward to seeing all of you, some of you during the panel interview. Uh, um yeah, so we're very excited to to have new students in our MI, MA in political science program. Okay, so again, thank you and have a good rest of the week weekend. Uh have a good lunch everyone. So thank you. So yeah, again, looking forward to receiving your applications. Bye bye. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. Thank you all for coming. Thank, Thank you, you. Mam Nuvuth, Sir Ali, Sir Dennis, Mam Sol. Bye bye.